Hello fellow brawlers, my name is Noob Time and I used to be a new player just like you. But thanks to Cairo's time and the tips he's about to give you guys, I am now gaining trophies faster than I ever had before. And no, I did not pay Cairo's time to push my account for me. That would be against the game's terms of service. And do you think I'm the guy that would do that? Okay, maybe I am. Hello fellow brawlers, I'm Kyra Simon. and it is time to brawl. Now today, we are going to be covering 10 things that new players do that experienced players do not. Make sure you stick around till the end of the video so that you can avoid one of the biggest pitfalls that a lot of new players fall into. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you do not miss my next video, which is going to be kind of similar to this, but a totally different style, a bit more of a, like a, a guide. And that's going to be 10 skills that pro players use to crush noobs. And believe me, you're definitely not going to want to miss that one. We're going to go ahead and start off with what I consider to be one of the biggest things that new players could easily change to vastly improve their gameplay. The number one thing that new players do is that they bunch up in the middle, staying way too close to friendly brawlers. Don't do this! Now, I'm not just saying this because there are brawlers that do splash damage and can affect multiple brawlers at once, though that is an important factor of this. But if you look over here to my beautifully drawn uh, arena of Brawl Stars, I'm going to show you three different images to help explain why this is such a big issue. Here is an image meant to represent new players playing against new players. The dots are obviously players, the arrows are the direction that the players are attacking. In this example, we have three brawlers from both teams all bunched up right in the middle, and as you can see, this is going to be incredibly difficult for you to actually dodge the enemy shots. Maybe you dodge one guy's shot, but then another guy is dot firing off at your teammate, and it happens to actually hit you instead. Everybody's all a little just too close together, and it gives you the least amount of control, which results in lots of deaths. Here is what it looks like when you have an experienced team, the blue players, facing off a less experienced team, the red players. In this case, the red players have to fire off against your team individually, just one-on-one, -on -one, and if you dodge their shots, then the shot is missed. But if you miss your shots, it's very likely that you'll actually hit one of their teammates. This is a very favorable matchup, and it's very likely that your team will actually stand victorious in this type of a situation. Now this is an example of what it looks like when you have an experienced team facing off against another experienced team. Essentially, one of your people actually stays in the middle, and then the other two people on your team either take the left side or the right side, and then you face off against each enemy player individually one on one. This makes it so that every single shot that you fire off counts because if you miss your shot, then you miss your shot and there's just no way you're gonna be able to hit another brawler. But coincidentally, it makes it so that every time you dodge a shot, that's actually a benefit to you and your team. What happens here is it comes down to individual player skill and if you do happen to take out your teammate, then you can either push up and keep the enemy team back or you can actually go in 2v1 against another enemy player, solidifying your victory for that match. In this case, each team is able to control as much of the map according to their skill rather than just being all clumped up in the middle. So do yourself a favor and split up even if you were supposed to be in the middle as a gem carrier on gem grab or something like that and your teammates happen to like go be a, a mine hog when they shouldn't be. Go to the side, split up, get away from your teammates and your gameplay will drastically improve. In fact, I have carried so many groups of new players on my mini account following this exact advice. The second thing the new players do that experienced players do not is play brawlers on modes and maps that they're just not good on. Now playing the right brawlers on a given map or mode makes a huge difference and every brawler has modes and maps that they do really really well in, but there are some brawlers that are just awful on certain maps and modes. Now I do understand that it does take some time to figure out which brawlers work on which maps and modes, but lucky for you, I've already figured it all out for you. I've already created a tier list that places all of the brawlers in tiers, explaining which ones are the best for every single mode in the game. The tier list playlist is in the link of all of my video descriptions, so all you have to do is click on that link in order for you to get the most up-to-date version of the tier list. And the S tier brawlers are literally good on any map for the given mode, so that's definitely worth looking into. The third third thing that new players do that experienced players do not is quickly spam all three shots as soon as they see an enemy brawler within range. If you do this, there is a very good chance that you won't actually have ammo to take out an enemy brawler when they are one shot away from being taken out. What experienced players do is they will willingly shoot out that third ammo whenever they have that third ammo slot charged up. Not using that third ammo slot is kind of a waste because it will just like automatically charge back like really quickly, but by not firing off more than one shot at a time, Experienced players will always have two ammo slots available to actually finish off their opponent once the time is actually right to do so. Remember that it is not
not the early fight that actually matters in Brawl Stars, it is the finishing kill. And if you don't have ammo to finish off your opponent, then it's uh, you're just going to be at a disadvantage. The fourth thing that I see new players do that experienced players do not is walk directly to and directly away from their target. This makes your movement incredibly predictable, which allows enemies to hit you more frequently. Instead of doing this, experienced players actually move in somewhat random movement patterns. This is important because, especially against like brawlers like Colt or Brock, who are very straight shooters, where if you walk directly to them or directly away from them, that actually allows them to get maximum damage with their auto aim which can be very difficult on you. In fact, even if you need to get away from an enemy Colt and he's firing at you, it's much better to sidestep to the left or to the right, so that even if the first couple of bullets hits you, the rest of the bullets actually won't. And for those times when you do need to get up close to a straight shooter like Brock or Colt, it's actually much better for you to do like a zigzag type movement, so that you can actually get close to them while they're wasting their shots at you. Or, even better, Use walls, which brings me up to the next thing that new players do that experienced players do not, and that is walking out in the open when they could be using a wall. Walls are your best source of protection in Brawl Stars, and guys, you should always use protection, so use those walls! Using walls allows you to have defenses to hide behind, it gives you some cover when the enemy player is firing off at you and you need to heal up or you need to actually like recharge some of your ammo, or if you just want to avoid damage. But for real though, if you do learn to stick close to those walls rather than walking out in the open, it will greatly improve your survivability. The sixth thing that I see new players do that experienced players do not is use their auto aim the majority of the time. Now, don't get me wrong, there are some close range brawlers that can be very good at using auto aim, but experienced players know that you should not use auto aim for the majority of your shots. It's very easy to tell if somebody is auto aiming and once you recognize that it's even easier for you to dodge their shots. Experienced players will learn to lead their shots which means that they will actually attack where the enemy players are moving to so that their attacks actually hit the enemy target once they get there. One of the best ways that you can actually aim is to aim right next to the corners of walls. Players will often try to go around those walls to heal up or recharge like I mentioned in the previous Tip, and so it is very likely that they will actually be going right next to those walls, which means that if you are aiming there, then you will very likely hit them. Auto aim is a very important tool that helps new players actually learn the mechanics of the game without actually having to have perfect aim when they very first start. It lets you have a good taste of the game so you can actually experience what it has to offer without actually pouring hours into mastering it, like I have. <laughs> but auto aim is not meant to be used permanently, manually aiming is the best way to play the game and the sooner that you learn to actually be accurate with your aiming, the sooner you will really start to dominate your opponents. The seventh thing that new players do that experienced players do not is forget to heal up. Defense is way more important in Brawl Stars than offense. This is true in Gem Grab, in Brawl Ball, in Heist, in Bounty, in Showdown. Oh wait. Did I just list all of the competitive game modes? Yeah, I did. Every single one of them. This is a very important thing because every time you get taken out and have to respawn, you lose control over the area, it will take time for you to walk back, your teammates will likely get ganged up on, and you will lose an opportunity to actually shoot at the enemy brawler if it comes to a critical moment where they could be taken out. None of these things actually happen when you fall back to heal or use the bushes or the walls to do the same. And that brings me up to the eighth thing, and that is that new players oftentimes do not utilize the bushes on the map. If there's a bush, always use the bush. Even if you are still planning on firing back at the enemy, there will be time in between your shots or in between the time that you actually get hit by the enemy brawler that you will be invisible. And this leaves the enemy having to guess where you are, which not only helps you stay alive, but it is a great way to gain an ammo advantage where they will not have enough ammo to take you out. And not to mention the fact that if the enemy players are not paying too much attention, there's a good chance you'll be able to surprise them in the bush. Which brings me to number nine, walking towards a bush without checking it first. Now, if you know where all the enemy players are you don't need to check the bush but if you do not you should always check the bush and guys there is only one thing that you can do to make sure that you are always checking the bush and that is to buy this always check the bush shirt or hoodie not only will it support the channel but people have reported that wearing it while playing brawl stars has improved their gameplay up to 100 of what it was before wearing it plus it increases your style by five points okay guys Number 10, the 10th thing that new players do, that experienced players do not. But before we move on to that, I want you to drop a comment in the section below letting me know which of the points that I've talked about today has improved your gameplay. The 10th 
thing that I see new players doing that is one of the biggest mistakes that you can do is push one or two brawlers way harder than all of your other brawlers. I've been seeing a lot of new players pushing only Bull or only El Primo or Shelly as hard as they possibly can and then hardly touching any of the other brawlers in the game. That makes sense. They're the easiest to actually do pretty well with with auto aim, but there are five big reasons why you should not do this, okay? The first reason is not all brawlers are actually good in all of the game modes. In fact, with the exception of a couple of maps, all three of those brawlers are actually all pretty terrible in gem grab and bounty. The second reason why you should not do this is because the skill that is required for you to win significantly increases every 100 trophies. I mean, if you push one brawler up to 300 trophies and end game is considered at 500 trophies, you're going to start getting crushed by a lot of end game players and it's going to make your gameplay much more difficult for you to actually win. The third reason why you should not do this is gameplay is actually very boring if you actually play the same brawler over and over and over again. There are currently 22 brawlers in the game. If you stick to the same one or two brawlers, you're only experiencing 10% of the game. And believe me, there is so much more to Brawl Stars than Bull or El Primo. The fourth reason why you should not do this is the fact that total trophies trophies is what matters most if you want to unlock more rewards. I actually hardly play my free-to-play account, but on my free-to-play account, I'm at 3,000 trophies where I've unlocked Bow, with only 14 brawlers that range between 200 trophies and 250 trophies. I don't have any mythics, I don't have any legendaries, I just push every brawler and it's incredibly easy. The fifth reason to not do this is the fact that the best way for you to learn the strengths and the weaknesses of every brawler in the game is to play them. When I play my main account, I'm often facing off against people that have pushed one or two brawlers to 400 trophies or 500 trophies, and I mean, it's worked out for them, they've pushed that pretty hard, but they do not have anywhere near the foundational knowledge that me and my teammates have to try and take us out, and we usually just obliterate them, like it's not even fair, or it's, and it's not even fun for us, it's not a challenge, it's not even impressive to get a 10 game win streak, because that's literally happening almost every time that I play with people on my main account. It's fine to push one or two easy brawlers further than the others, but as soon as you hit a wall, just take a break, go on to another brawler and try them out, learn them. And guys, believe me, as somebody that has pushed every single brawler past 500 trophies, that playing all of your brawlers is going to be the best way for you to vastly improve your own skill and improve your overall gaming experience. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I wanted to announce that on top of being active on Twitter, I am now going to start being active on my Facebook and my Instagram account. What did you think of the 10 things listed in today's video? I want to know and if there's something else that you've seen less experienced players do that uh, experienced players do not, make sure you drop it in the comment section below letting me know and like your favorite comments as well. Anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I wanted to quickly announce that on top of being active on Twitter, I am now going to start being more active on my Facebook page as well as my Instagram account. There are links to all of my social media accounts in the description of my videos. So go ahead and like and follow me on whichever platform you feel like you really wanna use. Before I end this video, I wanted to give a huge thank you to my YouTube members and my Patreon sponsors for helping support this channel in such a big way. And for now guys, this is Kairos time ticking by and we will see you in Brawl Stars.